Welcome back to What Are She Noobs with General Disturbance. This is a GW Tiger P. It's the Tier 8 German SPG located on the south spawn of Siegfried Line and it's under the command of Bigger Stickers. Now, this is one of my replays played earlier today and it's a dual perspective replay. What we're showing is my replay first, then we'll show the star of the show who actually did incredibly well in this game. Okay, I've got the 21 centimeter howitzer, which is the top gun. It's capable of 900 alpha. It'll penetrate 53 millimeters of armor and 11.4 meters of the burst radius. Standard reload time is 44.1 seconds. I may mean for the gap between the buildings. Oh, we got a brask. Well, he took a near miss, I think for 281 hit points. So he won't be too happy about that, and I'm changing positions to avoid counter battery. Okay, that should do. Moved away from the other side of the bunker. Ready to go. Okay, from this spot, I can actually aim a shot at that Vipera in the town. It's a difficult shot because I'm actually firing between two buildings. And we're almost loaded. Rounds out straight away. And it looks like the shell actually hit a building. So I didn't get that one directly on target. So I'm moving back to actually change the angle just slightly. And we're going back to the aim again. Now, there's the Vipera. Now I'm changing position whilst I'm in the aim mode. Notice I'm actually moving away from the bunker, opening up the gap, and now I'm changing to aim and shoot. Letting it settle. Let it dial in. Almost ready. Fully ready. Rounds out. Direct hit right on his front for 244. It didn't pen, but it did rile him, and it stunned him, and that's made him pull back. Okay, I'm changing position again whilst I'm still in the aim mode. Just moving slightly closer towards the cap area. Now there is a reason why I'm actually moving towards the cap area. This is a very slow RT. The maximum speed is only 35 kilometers an hour. So very slow. And the thing is that um, since there's a very big field out there and there are enemy tanks around, it's a good possibility they might break through in the field and I need to be able to get out of here quick. T28 prototype. Let's see if I can land a shell near him. Rounds out. Well, it landed the other side of him for 230 hit points of damage. Now, it's been a while since I've done a dual perspective game, but it's actually quite good fun when you do because you get a different perspective on what actually was going on in the battle. At the moment the star of our show is elsewhere. He's not showing in the field. In fact, I think he's actually down this way. Okay. B-44 Pantera. Rounds out. He dodged at the last second, but he actually got tracked and I'm picking up damage assist. I've got 628 stun assist there. Okay, my, uh, the star of the show is actually in one of the tanks down in the field at the moment. He's in the brass. The other brass was killed, so yes, he's over there. So he's holding back the enemy who could come around that corner. Now, having a quick look towards that bunker, I might try and land a shell just the other side of the bunker because I think somebody is there, but in fact, I see the enemy brass, the one that we fired at earlier, has actually come around that corner and he's trying to retreat. Rounds out. That's a direct hit. Wiped him out. No problem with that. I actually checked where that hit landed. It actually hit the tracks of the Brask but blew up right underneath him and um, blew him to pieces. And that was mainly down to the fact that obviously it's a very big shell 
It's got a very big splash radius and it does a lot of damage. Now I'm, I'm loaded but there's too narrow a gap there for me to shoot down towards the enemy. We've got a dead chimera on the corner. And now we've got another enemy tank turned up on this corner. I'm dialing in as quickly as I can. I might be able to splash through at the same time there. I came out of aim view after I fired, but I did hit both tanks. The T-103 and the AP AMX-30 actually did take damage from that shot. It's the AMX-30 prototype, isn't it? Okay. Now, it looks like he's trying to come forward again. So I'm reloading and staying on this corner. The Baraska's pulled back from the fields. The ELC-790 is pulling back. And that means the Pantera is free to move through the field to get towards me. So I'm going to have to move to get into the cap area. I'm staying on the Dragon's Teeth for the moment. I fire a round in at the T-103. Get some splash, 106 hit points. And I'm going to have to change position. But then I suddenly notice this Wizzy 111 FT. I've marked him as target. But I've got no shell. But luckily, our hero actually comes back and he takes the guy out. So I don't have to put a shell in his direction. And he did that from the back of the field as well. Okay, I'm now moving whilst in the aim mode. To actually see if I can get a better angle on these enemy tanks. I'm not dialed in. There's the KV-4. I fired the round in and it hits the wreck, but I do get some stun on the KV-4 at the very least. Now, a pole went down there, which means that somebody is actually on that corner. Or at least they're a little further back. Yeah, so I think there was another enemy there. And it was, it was that guy, the T-28. That was the guy who knocked the pole down. Okay, are they going for this corner? I think they're attacking the Skoda T-56. I'm almost loaded, and it's at that moment I see the T-28 come into view. Rounds out. That hit his rear wheel, would you believe it? The uh, drive wheel. And it tracked him, but he fixed his track very quickly to turn in my direction, so I'm going to move. There's uh, the Barass Reaper W4, who's actually... Um, oh, guarding our cap area. Unfortunately... T-103 had it in for me. Yes, right through my vehicle. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm now out of the game. And that's the end of my game. So, let's now see the replay from Reaper W4. And here is the battle from Reaper W4's perspective. He's on the south spawn of Siegfried Line. And there I am in the background. Game on. Okay, well, the Barask is a fake tank. Never actually existed. Although Wargaming originally said that it was a project and only existed in blueprints, uh, we know that that's untrue because it's a combination of a, a Batchat 12 ton tank and uh, the EBR turret. And in actual fact, the EBR turret was never made to actually contain a 105mm gun. And, well, the Batchat 12 ton project was cancelled before the EBRs were even built. Okay, it's a two-shot autoloader with uh, 360 alpha with each shot. It's capable of doing 720 in a burst, so it's very, very effective on the enemy. It's also fairly fast as well, 62 kilometers an hour top speed. Now, it's got a two-second intra-clip reload, and as I said, two shots, so 720 all together if you get an average roll. Now the penetration, which is standard APCR, is capable of doing 190 millimeters of armor with standard ammo, and with the premium rounds, it's capable of doing 240 millimeters, and with the HE rounds, well, it can do, so I get that to come up, 440 alpha, 53 millimeters of pen. Okay, well, he's been very secure here for the moment to actually just check out, find out where everyone is because he doesn't want to get sniped. Now he's looking at the enemy Baraska, I think, hiding in that little cubby hole. And he puts a round into him, but he did get spotted. Now is he going to pop the reload? Standard reload. Ooh, ow, that hurt. 
21.54 seconds standard reload he's got it down to 20.54 so he stopped the second off um yeah he looked, took a hit for 534 which is a high roll from the su-130 pm the brass pulls back into cover again um fortunately we just lost the other brass he was taken out by the enemy rt the su-14 too okay there he is just hiding but he's being very very clever to actually make sure that he doesn't pop out Okay, Reaper's not able... He hasn't popped his reload, but I think he wants to take another shot so he doesn't waste the shell not... Oh! And that Barask is definitely firing back in this direction, but he doesn't want to expose himself. He knows that we're here. He just dare not take a shot. Because if he does, stays out too long to get an accurate shot, then he could get hit. That's the one thing about this tank is it doesn't shoot well at long range. It's got a very long aim time and dispersion is not that great. So, yeah, he's holding that brass there, though. That's the good thing. Okay, we've got the P-44 Pantera. He's moving south. He's coming this direction. And we still can't see that, uh, but we can certainly see this guy. And... Oh, he missed it. And the Brask, he, he actually managed to uh, block the shot that came from the enemy Brask. And both guys pulled back in. You didn't see my RT round come in, actually. I did hit the guy with the RT round. I think it may have been the ill C Evan 90 that actually got the hit. Okay. Well. Ideally, he needs to pull away. If he tries to take a shot at that SU-130 PM, is it? No, it's a T-92. He could actually be exposing himself to fire from that Barask. He's still here with the ELC, but they both ought to pull back. There's the enemy Barask. Can't get a shot there. Can't get a shot at the Wizzy. He's well back into the city. He's just going to take one quick look. Did he get a shot? Yes. Nice kill. But unfortunately, he took another round from that SU-130 PM. And now he's down to just 219 hit points. And he's only got one shot left. If that Pantera pushes, he could be in a lot of danger. Okay, is he going to pull back? Yeah, he's reversing at the moment. But I think he really ought to get out of this area. And the ELC Evan 90 ought to do the same. Okay, he's redeploying to a safer position. You can see I was already at the uh, gates of the Dragon's Teeth by now. He still hasn't popped the reload. He really ought to pop the reload the moment he's fired one shot and decided not to shoot the other. Because after all, it's only 20 seconds. But it's much better to have two shots ready to go at a moment's notice. Okay, the Pantera is still not coming out. I think the Pantera is more worried about what... I might do to him because he did get winged by my shot and he got damaged after that so he's probably still hiding there behind the bunker hoping that I'll go away okay we've redeployed got a fair enough bit back yep this is this is good the LC ought to do the same but he's just holding on to keep eyes and we do have sight of some of the enemy tanks now at the moment in fact, there's that Wizzy 111 1 FT. I was about to shoot him. And he gets one in. And he gets the kill shot. So it's a good job he did have two shells ready to go. So he's actually got his first or his second kill of the game. Because of course the first one was the T92. Okay, T28 making his way through the streets. We can see the ELC's coming in behind us. He's abandoning the field I'm still right on the edge of the gate so um, in fact I just took a shot which actually hit the T28 at least it's not the T28 no it's the KV4 ok I'm right on the edge of the gate so you can see here I am and that really is not a good position to be in should have moved further in 
Very low on hit points. 219 hit points is not a lot. And the enemies gathering at the edges of this town. Well, I got some hit points off the spotting on the uh, T28. There's the T28. KD4. There's only four left on our team. There's the T28. Wait for the gap. There you go. Nice shot. Oh! 374 hit points. And he did get spotted. And he takes another hit, but it's actually on the tracks from the Gonzalo. Okay, ducks in for cover. There's still four left on his team. But there's six left on the enemy team, and that's the enemy RT. Ooh, look, he was aimed directly at him. Reaper managed to avoid it. You can see one of the enemy rounds actually went through the top of the turret. Okay, we've got the Pantera coming in. Reaper's trying to get into the bushes. He wants to be able to shoot at that uh, Pantera if he comes in. And he's also got to watch out for the field. Just in case the guy's coming out of town. Here comes the Pantera. Now, he must know he's been spotted, but I think he's thinking about the others. Okay, the enemy KV-4 has just gone down. It's now three versus five. Okay. He's just maneuvering to try and get a better position. He's also thinking about where he needs to go and how he needs to escape if he gets spotted. The moment he fires at that Pantera, he'll more than likely be seen. There's no enemies behind us. We've got the SU-130PM next to the lake. Enemy RT's focusing on the car re. There's the AMX-30. Oh, before we can get a shot, our SU-130PM finishes him off. Unfortunately, the car re went down. He was taken out by the enemy T-28 prototype. So now it's four versus two with the SU-130 PM behind us. Got two shots ready to go. It's more than likely going to be the Pantera who will come in first. We don't know where the SU-130 PM and the T-28 prototype are. They were last seen north of the map. They do still have an RT, the SU-14 too. We don't know where he is, but well, he's not going to be close. It's a very slow RT. So he's not going to be getting close to the south. Here comes the Pantera. Oh, it's the prototype. T-28 goes into the cat. It's looking for a weak spot. Yes, he gets it. And in fact, he takes him out with one shot, but he knocks over that tree. And we can just see that the SU-130 PM just took a Lati round and he just went down to the SU-130 PM. Oh, kill shot. Reaper just took out and killed the P-44 Pantera, who actually relocated from the Dragon's Deep all the way around to try and come in from a different angle. But the RT is still trying to get us, and he correctly guessed that we were in the reeds next to the lake, but we don't. he doesn't know where we are now. Okay. Well, he's got four kills now. He could still get a top gun and win this game it's one versus two now but the other one is the RT so we've got to try and kill the SU-130 PM now he's very healthy so this is going to be difficult he's got to get several shots into this guy and try and stay alive here he comes he managed to sneak up on us we pump one in and we get the second one in Got a low roll, 7.35, the SU-14-2 puts around near us. Well, he's in reload and so are we. Oh, the SU-130PM mucked it up. We can now wait and get the reload because he's probably still in reload. But he does this clever thing. He goes around the house, changes the angle, pumps one in, gets the kill shot. And that moment, he's basically, oh, that was the enemy RT trying to get him. Now things have changed. Everything's changed. Reapers managed to 
turn this battle around. It looked like we were going to lose. We were outnumbered six to four, and now it's one versus one. Now, the enemy RT, the SU-14-2, very slow, as I said. It's based on the T-35 tank, and it's not going to be running south very, very quick. In fact, I said that in chat. He ain't going anywhere fast. <laughs> no, he's a very slow RT, and I think he was actually in the corner over in Grid Square A1. I did ping the map where I thought he was. Wasn't certain, but I think he is out in the field. But Reaper's going down the edge. He's found him. Okay, he's just picking his spot. He's got nice bushes between him and the target. And he wins the game. And that was incredibly well done by Reaper. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was the first class tanker for Reaper W4 in the Barask. He managed to get a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points for his own vehicle, and a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got six in this one. He also got a top gun because the SU-14-2 was his sixth kill, and he did the most damage at a distance of 300 meters or more, and got the tank sniper medal on top as well. You have to fire at least eight shots. 85% accuracy. There's quite a few conditions to get a tank sniper medal, but he managed to get that one as well. His win eight from the game, 7,476, which is super unicum and quite a bit more. Let's have a look at team score. Well, we can see he definitely got the second highest damage in the game. Yes, unfortunately, he didn't pick up the highest damage or get a high caliber. The, he didn't get 20% of the enemy hit pool. The highest damage in the game too, that'd be the Wizzy 111.1 FT, we got 3,543 hit points. Second highest damage went to Reaper W4 with 3,481. And the third highest damage went to the SU-130 PM on the enemy team. Yes, that was the guy he was dueling with right at the very end of the battle. 2,756 hit points of damage went to him. When it came to kills, we can see he definitely got the highest number of those. Six kills went to Reaper W4. Three kills went to the SU-130 PM on our own team and also to the KV-4 on the enemy team. And I, well, I only got one kill out of that game. Um, when it came to base XP, he's got the highest in the game. So he's got the highest in two columns. 1,508, that's the only score over 1,000 base and a decent score at that. The second highest was the TS-5 with 879. The third highest, the SU-101, who managed to get... 825. It's surprising that 1508 is not an ace tanker, would you believe it? The standard is very, very high for this vehicle. So if you want to get an ace in a Barask, you're going to have to work for it. He fired 15 rounds in the game, got 13 direct hits and 13 penetrations. So it was only the shots that he actually fired at the Barask in the field that actually missed the target. The ones where he was trying to get the shot on him, but the guy kept ducking back into cover. 3,481 hit points of damage, of which 1,384 were at more than 300 meters. He received four hits from the enemy. Two of those were penetrations, two non-penetrations hit the tracks. And one hit by way of splash from the enemy RT was desperately trying to get him and failed, unfortunately. Three enemy vehicles were spotted. Eight enemy vehicles were damaged. Six were killed. 2,323 hit points of spotting assist. And he got five defense points when he reset the cap when he took out the T-28 prototype. Now, on a premium account, he actually earned 126,603 credits for the battle. And after repair and ammunition respite, because he used standard ammo, 108,137 credits profit. 2,262 XP for the game. 9,048 for completing a mission, 226 for this being a premium vehicle, and took away 11,536 experience points altogether. So a very decent result for um, uh, Reaper W4. Let's have a quick look at my results for this same game. Well, I only got a second class tanker out of this game. Of course, I was wiped out before I could actually do any more damage. I got a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, I got eight, and I got a confederate as well because I hit more of the enemy than anyone else on the team. My, my win eight was 2,286, which is pretty good. 
and uh, so it's fairly decent although I think I should have moved from the gates a little sooner to keep firing in fact I could have gone down to the lakeside uh, where uh, in fact Reaper W4 en ended up eventually because if I had gone there then I would have been able to keep pumping those shells out and possibly help him to win the game Let's have a look at the team score. Well, you can see I only got 1,799 hit points, which puts me a little way down the table because there's four players on the enemy team who are actually better than me and four members of my own team who are better, so I'm actually in ninth place on damage. When it came to kills, I only got the one. And when it came... That was the Barask, by the way, the enemy Barask. And when it came to base XP, you can see I only got 746, which puts me in fifth place on base XP. 10 shots fired, so not a huge amount, actually. Uh, normally, as I say, you normally want between 11 to 13 or more, and that would generate significant uh, revenue for you and get you higher up the table. Three direct hits on the enemy, 10 splashes, 1,799, all of it at more than 300 meters. I only received one hit. It was a penetrating shot, and that was the end of my game. That was the T-103, by the way. One of the tanks I actually hit. Seven enemy vehicles were damaged, one was killed, 1,166 hit points of stun assist off nine stuns. I actually suffered a loss in this game because it's on a free-to-play account. Although I earned 25,004 credits for the game, I was firing standard HE, but it's 21 centimeter shells and they are expensive. So I ended up with a loss of 5,476 credits for the game. But I did get 746 base XP, times two for the first victory, and took away 1,492 experience points altogether. So it was a great game by the Barass Reaper W4. Uh, he said at the end of the game, should I actually send it in or should I upload it? Uh, and I said, oh yes, send it to me and uh, I'll do it for all of you and you'll have a video out of it. And then told him where to look so he could actually uh, see the video when it does come out. I, it's actually quite nice actually being able to do these videos really quickly after the game was played because of course Reaper W4 can now look at this tomorrow afternoon and, and watch it and see ah that's what was going on behind me because of course you get a different perspective if you're in a different vehicle in the same game. I hope you enjoyed that replay if you did please give this video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and thank you for watching.